In this video, I'm going to show you how to make $250,000 a year as a Power BI professional. This is all the advice I have for you. I've been a consultant for 25 years, and I'm often asked how to make money and how to make more money. And this is these are the things that I tell people. Hopefully, you find this helpful. I tried to be as comprehensive as I could be. I can do it in about 15 slides or so. So it won't be too long of a video for you to see what you need to do in order to make a pretty good living as a data analyst or a data professional that specializes in Power BI. These principles, though, you could take to any tool. You could switch out Power BI for Tableau, or you could switch out to Databricks or to Fabric or whatever you, whatever you want to switch it to. These things that I'm about to show you, a university will not teach you. There are very few universities that have classes that can show you these topics. So you'll have to be a self-motivated learner, and you'll have to take online classes and read books and gain experience in order to learn all of the topics I'm about to share with you. But this video is not just about what you need to learn, although that's a major portion of it. It's also about how to conduct your business, how to build your business, and how to think about numbers and billable rates and things like that. The first thing you need to do is know everything about the Power BI ecosystem. The Power BI ecosystem is enormous. There are a lot of moving components. Many people treat Power BI as, I should just learn enough in order to do my job. But if you really want to be worth a lot of money, you should know Power BI well enough to do anyone's job. Meaning, how would I use this if I were a data analyst? How would I use this if I were a data engineer? How would I use this if I were an executive? How would I learn this if I were, how would I use this if I were a manager of a small team? How would I use this if I was a professor or a teacher or a nurse or anything? So you should know what everything does. And even if you think, I don't really like that component, you should still know what it does. And you should know in broad strokes, how to use it and how to implement it. You should also know what every button does in Power BI. So when you open up the app, you shouldn't say, well, I'll never use that visual, so I'm never going to learn about it. You should try it. You should look at the properties. You should see what how you can uh, control it and customize it, how you can use templating, how you can use Power Query, how you can use the marketplace, like how you can pivot data, all of if there's a button, you should play with it until you know what it does and how it works. Don't let anything go unexplored. You need to know two languages, DAX and SQL. Now, you don't actually need to know them as well as you did need to know them maybe two years ago, because a lot of our co-pilots and chat GPTs and uh, LLMs will help you learn these really well, but you definitely cannot ignore it. You, you definitely need to be able to read it and troubleshoot it and edit it and make it better. Um, and specifically for DAX and SQL, you should know like how to do a month to date calculation, how to do a year to date calculation, how to compare two values month over month, how to do basic math and basic statistics and basic aggregation like sums and averages and things like that and counts that and ideally even like percentiles um, because these are all very popularly asked by business leaders and data scientists and analysts when you create visuals and artifacts for them. There's plenty of online courses to learn these languages. And like I said, uh, AI and LLMs will help you do better and give you more ideas on how to modify code to get closer to what you're looking to do, you know, closer to your goals. You should understand data and business analytics. So you should know, you know, why would you use a spark line? Why would you use a bar chart? Why would you use a column chart? Why would you use trend lines? Why, you know, and, and how would you show a good trend versus a bad trend? How would you warn people that a bad trend has started and to keep their eye on it? How would you compare actual data versus goal data? Um, how do you know, like, if your goal is broken down monthly, like I expect to sell 500 cars this month, but it's only the 10th of the month, how do you break down your sales and the goal so that people know that they're on track or not on track as the month progresses? 
right? So how do you do month-to-date calculation versus month-to-date goal? Um, how do you account for weekends and, uh, and how do you account for cyclical sales and things like that? Um, how do you know when a number is good or a number is bad? A lot of these things just happen over time as you're asked for them by leaders, but there are plenty of courses that will share with you um, how organizations look at their business and measure the health of their business. So how do I know that my employees are good employees doing good work for the money I pay them? How do I know that my customers aren't going to quit and leave me? You know, these questions are great questions to ask yourself. And then once you've asked yourself that, how do I represent that in Power BI? Um, a, a book list that I highly recommend is the Personal MBA book list. It's the 99 best business books out there. Uh, I have not read all 99 of them, but I think I've read about half of them. And I think exposing yourself to uh, books that MBAs have to read, books about copywriting and about marketing and about sales and about financial data and about um, uh, you know manufacturing and things like that, organizational effectiveness, leadership, um, self-help books. It's a great way to expose yourself to a lot of different businesses and a lot of different trains of thought, even if you don't agree with them, and that will make you a better data and business analyst. Um, also learn a problem domain or a vertical industry. So um, as you work with your customers, don't just ask them, what do you want to see? Instead, think about retail as if you owned the store or the chain of stores. Think about healthcare as if you were leading a bunch of doctors and really learn about the things that deeply concern these professionals. The more you learn businesses, specific verticals like banking or the government, um, the more valuable you will be because the more you will speak their language and learn their taxonomy. And you won't have to have these definitions to find you every single time somebody's trying to learn something. Um, now, these next few slides are actually, these are like Ike's rules of business. Uh, many, many business people, and it doesn't matter if you own a dry cleaner or you own a, you know, you own a restaurant or you own a professional services company. Um, if you violate these rules of business, you will go out of business. So these rules of business, it doesn't matter if you're a Power BI consultant or your anything, you you have to obey these rules of business in order to be considered a good business person. So the first rule of business, according to Ike, this is just me, this is, these are my, uh, the things I've learned along the way, is to always respond with urgency. So you get email, you get texts, you get phone calls, and your customers and your colleagues are asking you a question and you might look at the question and you might make a judgment. That question is not as important as what I'm working on right now. And I'm here to tell you that that is a terrible way to go through life. Like you need to, you need to assume that the question that you're getting faced with is more urgent than what you're reading and you should respond to it at your first available opportunity. Now, that does not mean drop whatever you're doing all the time and answer every email. It does not mean that. It just means that throughout your day as you're working, you should stop what you're working on, maybe every two hours, maybe every four hours, check your email and answer everything. If you see an email that's going to require an hour or two or more of work, and you don't want to drop everything you're doing in order to do two hours of work and then respond to them, then at least respond, what you're asking me for is going to require a couple of hours of work and I'm going to do it tomorrow or the next day. Make a commitment, say, I'm working on something else right now, I want to respond to you and communicate that to the person who's asking you for something and I will get back to you at my earliest opportunity. Um, that at least tells the person that you care about them, that you're listening to them and that they're important to you and, and that you, you wish that you could do something quicker, but at the moment you've got a higher priority that you've got to, you've got to react to. The second rule of business is do what you say you're going to do, do it when you say you're going to do it, and as soon as you realize you can't do it, like you're going to break a commitment, communicate to the person who asked you that, I can't 
help you right now or something got in the way. I told you I'd have this report done by Friday. Something else happened. This was more complicated than I thought it would be. I failed at this. I'm not going to get it done until X time, right? So communicate. People have a tendency when they're going to break a deadline to be embarrassed and to not communicate. And that magnifies the problem. So instead of doing that, be communicative. If the failure is yours, own it. People trust people who are honest and open about their failures. They mistrust people who hide, who miscommunicate, and who blame other people. So take ownership and communicate if you don't think you're going to be able to do something on time. But remember, strive your best to always do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. The third rule of business, don't forget to get paid. Um, so many people work, 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 and then they don't invoice or they don't follow their invoicing and they don't follow up and make sure that invoices get paid. Like it's critically important, do not forget to get paid. Many people who ignore their financial status find themselves working themselves to death and completely out of business with no further options. So remember, don't forget to get paid. Keep up with your invoicing, invoice on time, when you say you're going to invoice, if you gave a company net 30, on day 30, ask them where the payment is. If they tell you they're going to be 10 days late, then on day 40, ask where the payment is. Um, it's important that you are polite because these are your customers, but you also need to be professional and firm. They made a commitment to pay you. Make sure that you hold them to that commitment. The fourth rule of business is remember that you are a trustworthy and reliable friend to everyone. Um, you're, you're a friend to your colleagues. You're a friend to your competitors. You're a friend to your leaders. You're a friend to your the people you hire, to your vendors and your employees. You are a trusted friend to everybody, which means that you will often act in their best interest, even at the cost of your own best interest. If you reliably do this, where you people trust you and they want to be around you and they know that you will do what you say you're going to do and you will act in their best interest, they will always want you around them and they will very often pay you to be around them. And that is an excellent way to grow a business. Now, now that you know those four rules of business, now you're working. Right? You're a Power BI developer and you're writing your Power BI reports and dashboards and you're building data models and you're building data pipelines and you're learning a lot. Um, it's important to do your billable work. So if somebody's paying you to work, work. If you don't have any billable work to do, then do your marketing and business development. So make YouTube videos, write Medium articles, write a blog post, um, you know, uh, volunteer to speak at a user group, write a talk. Call your old contacts and see if they need help. Like, just because you don't have billable work, don't just say, oh, the work dried up. I guess I'll, you know, go play my video games or be on Facebook or just take a walk. No, there's work to do. It's business development work and it's valuable work and it's fulfilling work and it will expand your reputation and it will grow your bill rate. So all good reasons to do business development. Go on LinkedIn, post an article on LinkedIn. There are plenty of ways to get your name out there and tell people you're available and open to do more work. Now, let's talk about billable rates. So there are roughly 2,000 billable hours in a year. If you're a brand new MBA and you go work for PwC or KPMG, um, you know, you might want to make a name for yourself and bill like 2,200 hours a year. That's possible, but you can't do that very long. You'll die. Um, if you do 2,000 hours a year, you'll be really tired. It, it, you'll be working a lot. It, in order to bill 2,000 hours a year, you probably have to work like 2,300 a year because there's so much of your time will be non-billable. Um, and you won't really have much of a social life. You won't really see your family that much. Maybe that's what you want, you know. Plenty of people want to live like that. I don't know, but um, just be aware there's, you know, if you work really hard, you can build 2,000 hours a year. If you want a work-life balance, I think a far more achievable goal is to build 1,650 hours a year. Then you get to have a social life and go on vacation and take some weeks off and, you know, live a, live a, a happy, fulfilling life, in my opinion. Um, if you bill $110 an hour, 1,650 is 181,000 a year. 
Um, as you get better at Power BI, better as an analyst, you learn your problem domain. Let's say you learn retail or legal or finance much better. You can start charging more and you can maybe the first year or two, you can charge 125 an hour. That's $200,000 a year. Um, eventually, a very good rate for most professionals to charge is 150 an hour. At 1650, that's 247,000 a year, and that's that's an achievable rate. Many many professionals, who I promise are not as smart as you are, or as ambitious, or work as hard as you do, plenty of them charge 150 dollars an hour and make 250,000 dollars a year at 1650. Um, it is achievable. Now, you can charge higher, and the market will support that. You can charge 195 an hour as a Power BI professional. And you'll stay pretty busy. You'll get somewhere between 1,500 and 1,700 hours a year, and you'll make somewhere around $300,000 a year. Usually, is what people make. It's that $300,000 barrier is a hard barrier. I've talked to many consultants, and many of them have difficulty breaking that barrier. Um, if you charge $250 an hour at 2,000 hours a year, you're making half a million dollars a year. But here's the rub. Very few organizations can afford 250 an hour, so they won't work you full time, and they won't work you for very long. So you'll work a lot less. Maybe you'll maybe you'll bill like a thousand hours a year at 250. You'll make 250, but you'll work a lot less. You'll you'll save yourself 600 hours, which is a lot of time you can spend writing books or going on vacation or doing whatever you want to do, right? And many many professionals do that, but they would consider. I think the market would consider them very elite. They would consider themselves data architects. They would consider themselves leaders and director level. They would consider themselves trusted C-level business colleagues that will, can coach colleagues about strategy and alignment and and uh, and maybe even they could even coach board of directors on how they should lead their businesses and what markets they should have their businesses enter. So 250 is a good rate. You'll have um, uh, fewer hours. You'll also need a lot more customers. So you, you can't just go off with just a few customers because you'll have more like three and six week engagements and then it'll be done until that customer needs you again. So you'll need to have four or five or 10 customers always having four week engagements and ready for the next one that's going to pay for you. So just be careful of that. How, now, let's go back to the 150 an hour, which is what I think your goal should be. You know, learn the things I told you to learn, build your business, get your name out there, charge 150 an hour. Um, really, you only need about three customers. That's it. You need three customers to pay you between 50 and 100 grand a year, and um, you'll you'll make about 250. And if you're at 150 and you get really good at their problem domains and at their business, and you really understand how they do business, customers are pretty lazy. You know, once you know their business really well, they really won't go anywhere else. They will stick with you, and they will pay you, and they will want you around, and they will want your insight, and they will want your knowledge and they will consider you very valuable. Um, you might want a fourth customer just in case one of your customers has hard times or they they have to lay off or they're really worried about money or they go bankrupt. And that way, um, when you lose that third customer, you, you pick up the fourth one. But there you go. Get a few customers, develop mastery of Power BI, learn a couple languages, remember the four rules of business, and you'll do just fine. I promise you, you're smart enough and capable enough to and I'm rooting for you. I know you can do this. Hopefully this helps you, and I look forward to hearing about your professional journey. Thanks. Have a great day.